Are you having a hard time homeschooling your child that maybe has ADD, ADHD, um, on the spectrum, any kind of special needs? If so, then stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my top three favorite techniques when it comes to dealing with learning challenges and how you can help and encourage your student to be as successful as can be. Hi everybody, my name is Karen. Welcome back to our channel called Dar House. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing if you'd like to go from questions to confidence when it comes to homeschooling. I'm here to answer questions. And especially when it comes to the Robinson curriculum, I see this question a lot. How can my child sit still and do math for an hour or sit and read for two hours or write an essay for an hour? Uh, they just can't even picture it. And so in this video, let's go over some tips that will really help with that. All right, so first let's talk about how the brain works so that you can better understand these techniques and what your child could be going through. So there's two modes that your brain has. There's the focused mode and the diffused mode. And I like to think of this as focused, eye on the prize, and diffused is eye on the flies, you know? So the first one, you're focusing on something. It has all your attention. You're actively engaging your brain onto what you're doing and diffused is where you're just kind of daydreaming you're just letting thoughts come in and out of your mind so i read this in a book and i think it's a great example to think of it as a pinball machine so let's say focused is when you're pressing those buttons and trying to get the uh, pinball to go where you want it so you're focused and then diffused is when it's just kind of falling and you're seeing where it's gonna fall where that ball is gonna fall and in these pinball games there's a lot of holes where the ball can fall through and then you have to start all over. I think that is a great example because that's what happens. You could be really focused on a task and then it just, the ball kind of drops through that hole and you've lost it and you've got to regain that focus. And so for some children, this happens a lot more frequently than with other children. Now this is not necessarily a bad thing because that diffused mode for your brain is what encourages creativity. That's when people get their best ideas and we need that, especially in a world where we're just so multitask oriented. We never want to let our brains be diffused. We always want to be focusing on something. Um, we really need that. We need that diffused time to just daydream, let your mind wander, to be able to get inspiration and ideas, creativity. So it's not a bad thing, but how can you uh, keep it in control when it comes to homeschooling when you do have to focus? So the main difficulty can be dealing with procrastination. Uh, a child is resistant to this idea of doing math for two hours or reading for two hours. They can groan, and I've talked about this in other videos, how when you're groaning, you're activating that insular cortex in your brain that actually feels physical pain. That's why you're grunting, you're thinking of an unpleasant task, but usually after 20 minutes of doing it, you know, that feeling is gone. You feel fine. Same thing for adults with exercise. We may be groaning thinking, ah, oh, I don't want to work out. But once you're doing it, you feel good. And afterwards, you feel great that you did it. So same thing. How can we help our child push through that procrastination, that hump to do the work that they need to do? So the first technique that I want to talk to you about is called the Pomodoro Technique. And it's called that because the person who invented it, Francisco Cirillo, he used a tomato shaped timer. So that's why it's called the Pomodoro. And so what the whole cycle, what we call doing a Pomodoro is 25 minutes of focused attention doing a task. And then after that, spending, you know, five to 10 minutes on a diffused activity. And I'll go into this a little bit more. And then after doing four of these Pomodoros of 25 minutes, taking a longer break, maybe like a 20 minute break. All right, so let's break this down, how this works exactly. Now you just have a timer like this. I like using something like this. You know, you put it to 25 minutes because it has that ticking sound. Now for a lot of children, they need to hear that ticking sound to know that time is in fact going by. If you're using a timer on your phone, then they might think, is the timer really on? Is it really working? Is it counting down? How, what's left on it? So something like this where they can visual, visually see how much time is left and they're hearing it count down, that's going to be better for a lot of children. And so for this 25 minutes, they are going to sit down and complete a task. They are going to only work on their Saxon math. They're going to only work on writing their essay, nothing else, no multitasking. And 
you have to really eliminate as many distractions as possible. Now for a lot of kids, they really benefit from having noise canceling headphones. So if you can use those, great. Just trying to minimize all the distractions, especially if you have a smaller house and there's a lot of ki uh, children in the home, there's a lot of room for distractions. So noise canceling headphones are great. If you can't afford those, your plugs are cheaper and they work just as well, I think. So you can do that. Now, after the 25 minutes are over, again, give them five to 10 minutes of you know diffuse time. And some great suggestions for that are playing with the pet or just going outside, stretching your legs, getting some uh, fresh air. But you don't wanna reward that with something like an electronics, you know, five minutes of watching TV or five minutes on a device. I really would not recommend that. That's going to derail the rest of the Pomodoros. Again, just once you introduce those things, it's kind of like game over, you know? So just focus on doing the Pomodoros and a little bit of diffused creativity, break, jumping on a trampoline, you know, whatever, five to 10 minutes, not, nothing that's too distracting, and then they can continue with another Pomodoro. And after the fourth one, you could take a longer break, maybe 20 minutes. Number two is the rubber ducky technique. This is something that really reminds me of the overnight student, and how this works is you just take a rubber ducky and you teach it. You, you encourage your child to teach the rubber ducky whatever it is that they're learning. Maybe it's their vocabulary words and they can just read the word and the definition to the rubber ducky. Having that object that they can look at and kind of fixate on to keep their focus, they're teaching the ducky their math, their concept, whatever. They can read the lesson to it and try to explain how to work a problem or um, maybe read aloud the book that they're reading. What You can be really creative with this, but just incorporating that, incorp but just incorporating something so simple like that, just having a rubber ducky that they can teach it's going to help them uh, solidify the information. Again, you can read more about this in The Overnight Student, how he went from failing out of college to making straight A's, just taking notes and pretending to teach somebody else the information. Number three is to teach them some powerful reading techniques so that they can stay engaged and stay focused. One thing to try is something called a picture walk. So before they start the next chapter of whatever it is that they're reading, let them go on a little picture walk, look through the chapter, look at the pictures, kind of get an idea of what's going on, look at a few sentences here and there, and then they can go back and really read the chapter. This is gonna warm them up, just give them an idea of what's to come. Number two within that is to read with care. Teach them that while they are reading, they really need to read with care. What that means is that they're trying to imagine everything that they're reading, making it into a picture because pictures um, stick faster in our brains than just random text of information. So have them visualize it, picture it, really bring the image uh, to the front of their mind, see it, and try to keep tabs of, you know, what are the pieces, what are the characters, what's what action, what are the locations, keeping those things all in mind and linking them up together. Bonus, if you can link them to something personal to you, how you can remember it, that's all going to help. So just reading with care, and if they need to take a pause for a second and go back and reread it and try to do this again because they lost focus, that's fine, but just reading with care. And then when they're finished with the chapter three within that would be to actively recall as much information as possible. So again, they're taking a break at the end of the chapter and they're thinking about what were those pieces? What were those characters? What actions happened? How does it all link up together? What were the locations? Why are they important? And again, to try to help it stay better in their mind is linking it to something personal with you or a visual that's personal to you. That's really going to help when it comes to the reading part, the reading comprehension. This is why things like the Anki flashcards are so popular because you are creating the image to associate with that word, which is just going to stick into our brains faster. One example that I really liked how they illustrated this was think of your brain as a locker. And so you have a shelf in your locker with a tube of toothpaste and you know that's it inside your locker. So when you remember things, if you have a picture, you can just tape that into your locker and it's done, it's there, it's in your brain now. Versus just text information, it's like trying to squeeze it inside of the tube of toothpaste on that shelf 
in the in your locker so it's a lot more challenging right to squeeze something in to a toothpaste bottle versus just taping a picture inside a locker so anytime that you can create your own visual for something just take it to the bank it's in your brain right that's a very powerful technique so encourage your child when they're doing this when they're reading to think of pictures and to make it personal to them all right, that's it for this video. If you like this type of content, please give it a thumbs up so I know to make more videos like this. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Share this with a friend that might be struggling with all of this when it comes to homeschooling. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm going to link in the description below a couple of videos that have really helped me with this information. So I hope that you will check them out as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video. Bye.